Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. My name is Brother Nathaniel, and to my right is Barack Shaw. Okay, let's open up with John 8.32, for which is the namesake of the program, okay? The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. John, chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, we've been in bondage here in the United States of America for hundreds and hundreds of years. The time of salvation is near. The time of our deliverance is at hand. It is near. Read it again. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is the time to be set free. This is the time to be made free. Free. Let's go, let's start with Exodus 4. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 4. We're going to start with a little bit of color to show you what our forefather Moses looked like, according to the Bible. Many of you in your mind, when you hear the name Moses, you think Charlton Heston, the Ten Commandments. That's what you foolishly think. Exodus 4, we're going to read verse 4 to 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and became a rod in his hand. So this is when the Lord was showing Moses his miracles. He said, take that rod by the tail, the, st the snake by the tail, and became a rod in his hand. Read. Verse 5. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. So he had to show the Israelites that first and foremost. Go ahead, watch this. Verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. Then he says to Moses, Put now thy hand into your bosom. So Moses had to put his hand in his bosom, in his garment. Okay, go ahead. And he put his hand into his bosom. Go ahead. And when he took it out. And when he took it out. Behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was leprous as snow. Meaning the hand of Moses lost all pigmentation. It looked white like snow. Come on. Verse 7. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. Now he says, put back your hand into your bosom again. Go ahead. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it was turned again as his other flesh, meaning the flesh of, from his head to his feet. Okay? Meaning dark brown. Just like everybody else. Oh, you're still doubting, huh? Let's, let's go to another scripture. Go to uh, Exodus 2, verse 17. Watch this. Exodus chapter 2, verse 17. Watch this closely. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them. So now this is when the, the Amalekites came and drove the shepherds of the daughters of Jethro away. Go ahead. But Moses stood up and helped them. And when Moses helped them, go ahead. And watered their flock. And watered the flocks of the daughters of Jethro. And when they came to, Ru to Ruel, their father. And when they came to Ru Ruel, their father, that's Jethro, go ahead. He said, how is it that ye have come so soon today? He says to her daughters, his daughters, how are you finished so soon? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. They thought Moses was an Egyptian. See, a lot of you don't know nothing about geography. The land of Egypt, where is it located? Is Egypt in China? Is Egypt in Saudi Arabia? No, Egypt is in Africa, where there are black people. People of dark pigmentation lived in Africa, live in Africa, lived in Egypt, okay? Now, from there, let's go to Acts 7, verse 22. Okay. We're still dealing with Moses for a, for a moment. We established his color. We established that he looked like he was an African, okay? Acts 7, verse 22. Remember, Moses was raised in the household of Pharaoh. Come on. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So Moses had to learn all the foolish gods of Egypt. He had to learn of agriculture, war, all these things. Go ahead. And was mighty in words and in deeds. And Moses was mighty amongst the Egyptians. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. So, because a lot of brothers, a lot of you that follow Dr. Ben and all that, you go, Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh, brother. But Moses did something when he repented. I mean, Hebrews eleven twenty-four. 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, 
refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, what is that saying? Read it again. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be called an African prince because Moses was not an African prince. Moses was an Israelite. So he refused to be called what? He refused, but refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He didn't want to be known as a son of Pharaoh's daughter. He said no. And as great as, 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 great as that title was, he says no. He was not Pharaoh's daughter. He was not an African. He was not an Egyptian. Moses, by faith, understood that he was an Israelite. You brothers and sisters have yet to come to that realization. You, I'm African American. That's what you say. You're in that dumb state of mind, but it's time for you to wake up. From there, let's go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. It's time for the black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman to wake up. Watch this. Isaiah 1 verse 3. The ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Let's read it again. The ox know of his owner. An ox is a dumb animal. So God is comparing the Israelites. He's going to do some comparison. He says, when you think about the Israelites, you, what comes to mind is an ox. But there's a difference between an ox and the Israelites. An ox, as dumb as he is, he knows who owns him. He knows his God. He knows his master. Go ahead. The ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. Now the Most High compares us with a jackass, because that's what an ass is. He says, Israel, the Israelites is like an ass, but there's a difference between an ass and the Israelites. An ass knows his master's crib. He knows his land. He knows where he lives. He knows where he belongs. Come on. But Israel. But the Israelites... Doth not know. The Israelites don't know what? They don't know who their master is, meaning their God, and the Israelites don't know what their homeland is. Now, they ask yourselves, you might be sitting at home right now, next to your wife or husband, next to your son or daughter or your friend. Ask them, what is your nationality? You're going to get a dumb answer from a Negro. Ask them, what is your homeland? You're going to get another dumb answer. Okay? Read it again. The ox <laughs> know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. God's people don't consider that they are the Israelites, the sons and daughters of God Almighty. From there, let's go to Jeremiah 2, verse 11. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. Because you ask, you ask if any five black men in the room, give them a piece of paper. Okay? Don't let them talk to each other. Just ask them, what's your nationality? One going to say, I'm a black man. One going to say I'm Afro-American. One's going to say I'm African-American. Another one going to say I'm, I'm Negro, depending on how old he is. Okay, another one might say I'm Jamaican. Just dumb answers. Slave answers. Okay, ask them where's their homeland? More dumb answers. Uh, Africa. One might even be so dumb as to say South Carolina. Okay, just don't know. Okay, I, uh, Jeremiah 2, verse 11. Have the nation changed their God? It's the most I ask in a question. Read it again. Have a nation changed their God? Have a nation changed their God? Which are yet no God? Which are yet no Like, for example, the Chinese. They worship Buddha. They've been worshiping Buddha for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years even. Mm -hmm. they've, they've kept that false God. Read it again. Have a nation changed their gods? Which are yet no gods? The East Indians. They worship false idols. Krishna, Vishnu, Vishnu and all that. The goddess with the eight arms. They've been worshiping that madness for thousands and thousands of years. They ain't changed nothing. Read it again. Have a nation changed their gods? Which are yet no gods. Which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. But my people. Who is God's people? The Israelites. But my people have changed what? Have changed their glory. Have changed their glory, meaning their God, for that which doth not profit. For that which doth not profit. Because when you read the Bible, what does God Almighty look like? Get Daniel 7, verse 9 for you. Hold that. Daniel 7 and verse 9. What does God Almighty look like? Daniel 7, verse 9. I beheld 
to the thrones were cast down. So the prophet Daniel, he saw in a vision till the thrones, meaning all the kingdoms of the world, were thrown down by Christ. Come on. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Then he saw in his vision the Ancient of Days, God Almighty. Why does it call him the Ancient of Days? Because he has no beginning of days and no end of days. Whose garment was white as snow. Oh, this is showing you that God has a body. In order to have a garment, you've got to have a body. Read that part again. Whose garment was white as snow. He had on a white, beautiful, glorious garment. Come on. And the hair of his head. And the hair of his head. Like the pure wool. Like what? Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Not a perm, sister. Like the pure wool. Read the verse again. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So Daniel beheld till the kingdoms of the world were thrown down by the Lord, by Christ. And the Ancient of Days did sit. And the Ancient of Days, which is God Almighty, did sit. If he ha In order to sit down, you got to have a body. If you sit, you got to have a buttocks to sit on. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. And as he saw the Ancient of Days sitting with his body, he had on a glorious white garment. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Daniel says, and the hair on his head is like the pure wool. Okay, no, 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 watch this. Go to John, John 7, I won't have thou uh, been so long time, Philip. Right, John 14. John 14, thank you, that's what I want. John 14, where Philip asked Christ, show us the Father. Right, you got it. John 14, verse six. Uh, excuse me, verse eight. Philip saith unto him, Lord, Show us the Father. So now Philip asked Jesus the Christ to show, the, show them the Father, the Heavenly Father. Right? And it sufficeth us. And it'll suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, has thou not known me? So Christ says to Philip, Philip, I've been with you all this time, and yet you have not known me. He's Christ going to explain what he means. Go ahead. Philip, because some of you foolishly think that God the Father and God the Son is one person. Right. You don't know the Bible. Come on. He that have seen me have seen the Father. So Christ said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. He's going to further explain. Come on. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Go ahead. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? I am in the Father. And the Father in me. And the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself. So Christ said, I don't speak of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me. But the Spirit of the Father is within me, Christ is saying. So Christ is letting Philip know, I look just like my Father. I look just like my Father God. And let's get the description on that. John Revelation. No, Daniel 10. Let's go back to Daniel. Because the prophet Daniel, the Most High, showed him many wonders. Daniel chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphat. So on this, in this vision, he said he saw a certain man who had a golden girdle made of euphat, which is precious gold. His body also was like the barrel. When you look up that word barrel, it means green. So this in this vision, Christ had on a green garment. And his face as the appearance of light. And he had a halo, a glow on his face. Not a halo, a glow on his face. And his eyes, his lamps, fire. Because he drunk wine in moderation when you read Genesis 49 and verse 12. Go ahead. And his arms. And his arms. And his feet. And his feet. Like in color. Like in color. To polish brass. To polish brass. Did we get the hair of his head? Give me the one in Revelation. Revelation. That's the one I want. Mm -hmm. I want to get the hair of his head. Revelation Chapter 1, verse 14. Right. Revelation 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Key word out of that, wool. 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 When Daniel saw the vision of God Almighty in Daniel 7 and 9, he said, and the hair of his head was like the pure wool. So now we're reading about Christ. Go ahead. His head and his hairs were like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So now when we go back to John 14 again, let's go back there. Okay. Now we got this understanding when Christ said, have I been so long time with you, Philip? Mm -hmm. John 14. John 14, verse 8. Philip, 
Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. Meaning I look just like my Father God. That's what I look just like my Father. Like Father, like Son. Popular expression in the world. From there, let's go back to Jeremiah 2. And verse 11 again. Watch this now. Now we have an understanding that God Almighty has hair like the pure wool. Christ, the Son of God, has hair like the pure wool, whose skin like burned in a furnace. Watch this. Jeremiah 2, verse 11. Have the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? The East Indians we discussed and the Chinese, they kept their same foolish gods for thousands of years. But my people, but the Israelites, you black men and black women, Latin men, Latin women, have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. You have changed your glory, your God, into that which does not profit. You no longer worship the God whose hair is like the pure wool. You changed that when you went into slavery. Now what you worshiping? You worshiping a God with blonde, straight hair, with blue eyes and red skin. And you say, oh, the white man is a hunk. The white man is my God. You are the only nation who worships a God that does not look like him. You understand how foolish you are? Read it again. Have the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Come on. Be astonished, O oh, you heavens. At this, and be horribly afraid. Be, be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. My people, the Israelites, have committed two evils. Come on. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. You have forsaken God Almighty, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the same God who has the hair as the pure wool. And hewed them out cisterns. You hewed out cisterns. What does that mean? You got yourself false gods now. You got white gods with yellow hair and blue eyes. You got denominations. That's the cisterns. One cistern is called Baptist. Another cistern is called Roman Catholic. Another cistern is called Pentecostal. Another cistern is called Jehovah Witness. Another cistern is called Mormons. Another cistern is called Islam. Okay? And these cisterns are broken and cracked. Water's pouring out because they hold, have no truth. Come on. And he hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns. Broken cisterns. These broke religions you in because all those denominations you're in are broken. They can't save you. They can't help you. Come on. That can hold no water. They can hold no water, no truth. Come on. Is Israel a servant? Is Israel? And I want you to pay close attention to this part right here. Come on. Is Israel a servant? Is the Israelites a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is Jeremiah asking that? Why is the Lord saying that? Because anytime you read the Bible, where are the Israelites at? In captivity. In slavery for breaking God's commandments. Read it again. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? Why are the Israelites always spoiled when you open the Bible? There's always another nation on dominating them. So now when you look at that in conjunction today, is the white man in Israel uh, that says he's Israeli, mm -hmm. is, is he the Israelites? Read it again. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? No, they ain't in slavery over there. Who's in bondage today? Not having your own language, your own laws, your own land. You don't even have your own woman. Read it again. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? You are a homeborn slave, black man, black woman. Why is he spoiled? Why are you always spoiled every time you open the Bible? Was that in on verse yeah, 14? From there, let's go to Matthew 2 in verse 13. Okay, because now comes the question. Okay, if we as a people, all the Israelites, didn't they get us from Africa? How is it that you say... That our land, hold this, hold that, go to Galatians 4 mm -hmm. and uh, 16 or 26. Right, and 26. Yeah, Galatians 4, 26. What is our motherland? Let's, let's start there. What is our homeland? What is the motherland? Because right now, the dumb thought you're saying right now, Africa, Africa. Let's see what God says. Galatians 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. But Jerusalem, which is above all nations, is free. Which is the mother 
of us all. Jerusalem is what? The mother of us all. The Bible declares, brothers and sisters, that Jerusalem is your motherland. Jerusalem is your homeland. So now here's the question. How did you get into Africa? Go to Matthew 2.13. Let's start with the Savior. Let's start with our Messiah, Jesus, the anointed Christ. Matthew 2, verse 13. And when, they, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying. So now the angel of the Lord came to the Father of Christ. And I said it like that for a reason. I'm going to say it again. The angel of the Lord came to the Father, the earthly Father of Christ. Go ahead. Saying, Arise. And take the young child and his mother. Take, arise, take the young child Christ and his mother Mary. And flee into Egypt. Flee where? Into Egypt. Here's a question to you. Where is Egypt, brothers and sisters? Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's right. Africa. Egypt is in Africa. Now, if this was a white baby right. whose mama was white and whose daddy was white, could they hide in Africa? No. They'd stick out like a sore thumb. The Herod would have found them swiftly and speedily. Read it again. And when, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Flee into Africa. Was that it on that verse? And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You stay in Africa until I bring you word. Because the white man Herod... The, the so-called Jewish king, because he was the, a convert, he will seek to kill the baby Christ. Stay there until I give you word again. You stay in Africa. You understand that, brothers and sisters? Now, from there, let's go to Luke 21 and verse 19. Now, what about the, the rest, the bulk of the Israelites? How did we get to the west shores, the west banks of Africa? Okay, how? Did Christ prophesy that? Luke 21 verse 19. Let's start there. Luke 21 verse 19. In your, in your patience, possess ye your soul. So brothers and sisters, the first thing, one of the major things I need you to understand is you need patience when it comes to understanding the Bible. Take your time. Don't rush. All your questions will be answered. Okay? Your ministers for many years have had no answers because they don't know the Bible. Sure, they can shuck and jive. They can dance a jig, but that's about it. They can coon all over the place, talk about some foolish dreams they had. <laughs> but you're going to learn this Bible, but I need you to be patient. Read it again. In your patience, possess ye your soul. Come on. And when you shall see Jerusalem <laughs> compass with all. Stop. Christ is talking to the Israelites. He said, when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. What armies was against Jerusalem? What armies were against the Israelites? The Romans. Rome, the Italians. I'm going to make it real for you, okay? I'm going to show you that the Bible is a true book, a real book. Read it again. And when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. The armies that compassed Jerusalem was the Italian, the Romans. Come on. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then know that the destruction of Jerusalem is near. Because the prophecy had to come to pass. The Israelites had to be brought down into slavery. They had to lose their power. Come on. Then let them which are in Judea, then let those Israelites who are in Judea, flee to the mountains. Flee where? To the mountains. Now when you examine geography, where are the mountains in Israel? The nearest mountain. Where? Okay. Where did Christ flee? Where did the angel tell Joseph to hide the baby Christ? That's right. In Africa. Where is Christ instructing the Israelites to flee? Read that part again. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Where they flee? Into Africa. Come on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And you Israelites that's in the midst of this land, run out, depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. And you other Israelites that's scattered, that's around Israel, don't come back to this land. Come on. For these be the days of vengeance. For these be the days of vengeance. Come on. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things written may be fulfilled. Hold that. We're going to go right back to get Deuteronomy 28. All things written must be fulfilled. Deuteronomy 28. What was what needed to be fulfilled? Deuteronomy 28 verse 49. Deuteronomy 28 verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Who was that? At the time of Christ, it was talking about Rome. Come on. From the end of the earth 
as swift as the eagle fly. What was the symbol of ancient Rome? The eagle, the eagle, the eagle. Now these scriptures are twofold, threefold, because later on in the 1400s, who came from the ends of the earth? Spain. What was the symbol of Spain? The eagle, the eagle, the eagle. Then what happened in the 1600s? England and America rose up. And what was their symbol? The eagle, the eagle, the eagle. France rose up. What was France's e symbol? The eagle, the eagle. Read it again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly. Come on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. What was the tongue that Rome spoke during the time of Christ? Latin, Latin, come on. A nation of fierce countenance. And Rome had a fierce countenance. Come on. Which shall not regard the person of the old. They didn't care if the Israelites were old. Nor show favor to the young. And they didn't show favor to our children, our babies. They slaughtered us. Come on. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. And he took our cattle. Come on. And the fruit of thy land. And the fruit of our land. Until thou be destroyed. And we were destroyed as a nation. Come on. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until, until I have destroyed thee. Watch this. Come on. Verse, verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. This is the proof right here. That this part here, verse, what verse is that? 52. 52 is specifying Rome. Read it again. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. How, when was the siege of Jerusalem? In the year 70 A.D. Rome encompassed the camp of the saints. Come on. Until thy high and fence walls come down. And our walls came tumbling down. Come on. Wherein thou trustest. And we had trusted in our high walls. Throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land. Now let's go back to uh, Luke. Luke 21. And when you shall see Jerusalem mm -hmm. encompassed. Okay. Luke chapter 21. You were at 22, yeah, I think? Yeah, verse 20. Verse 20 uh, you want the vengeance again? Oh, back to, uh, where is that? Above it. Okay, verse 20. Luke 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies. That's what Moses prophesied about. That's what Moses said would happen. Come on. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. The destruction is near. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Flee to the mountains of Africa. Run! Run! And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Depart out of this land. Come on. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein. And if you scattered and you in these other lands, don't come back into this land. For these be the days of vengeance. These be the days of vengeance. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. What things were written that had to be fulfilled? The writings of Moses and the prophets. Read. But woe unto them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days. Didn't Moses say? It said a nation of fierce countenance. Which shall not show favor to the old or young. Or young. Come on. For there shall be great distress in the land. And wrath upon this people. And wrath upon this people. Black man, black woman. We have been under the wrath of God for many. Hundreds and hundreds of years. Read. And they shall fall. By the edge of the sword. The they that fell by the edge of the sword is the Israelites. Our people fell by the edge of the sword. Come on. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Read that again. And shall be led away captive into all nations. What happened to you, black man, black woman? We were led away captive as slaves into all nations. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. Who's in our homeland? Read it again. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. So Christ is proving that who's in our land today are the Gentiles. Not the real Israelites, but converts, phonies. Read it again. And Jerusalem shall be, shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the time of the Gentile rulership be finished. That's what Christ is letting you know. Now, from there, let's go to Revelation. I'm sorry. Go to Joel 3. Joel chapter 3. Okay. We're going to bring it up to date. Because remember, there are 12 tribes in the nation of Israel. In Joel 3, we're just going to deal with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Those three tribes we're going to deal with here in Joel 3. From verse 1. Joel 3 verse 1. For behold in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah 
and Jerusalem. When I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. When it says Judah and Jerusalem, the two tribes that was given to Judah, you had Benjamin first, followed by the Levites, came with Judah. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations. Here's the prophecy, which has not come to pass yet. I will also gather all nations. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. God says he will bring all nations down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The word Jehoshaphat means decision. God is going to make the ultimate decision in this last third world war. Come on. And will plead with them there for my people. God is going to plead with all nations for his people. See, God is not for all people. He said he's pleading for who? For my people and for my heritage Israel. Stop. In case you were confused and you got that dumb Negro thought that go, well, all people is the people of God. Read it again. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Israel is God's people. Whom they have scattered among the nations. What happened to the Israelites? Whom they have scattered among the nations. What did Christ say what happened to the Israelites? It said you shall be led away captive into all Nations. Read it again. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And what? And parted my land. Who is the land? Who is our homeland parted between? The Israelis, the white man that claims to be Jewish, and the Arabs, the Palestinians, parted our homeland. Come on. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. Uh oh. Now God is going to explain why he's going to plead with all those nations. Why God must be the voice of the Israelites. Because what did they do? And they have cast lots for my people. Once they scattered us and parted our land and said they did what? They have cast lots for my people. What does it mean they have cast lots for God's people? Meaning they bid on us in slavery. Nigga, 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 they sold to Master Charles in Virginia. Nigga, 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 sold for $500. To uh, Susie, whatever, in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Come on. And they have cast lots for my people. And they've given a boy for an hog. In slavery, they, gave, they made the young black boys into breeders, harlots. They had them sleep with their sisters, their aunts. Anything to produce more and more slaves. Because slavery was big business. Slavery is big business. Read the verse again. And they have cast lots for my people. They bid on us in slavery. And have given a boy for an hog. They made us into breeders. And sold the girl for wine. And they sold young black girls for what? For wine. For what? For wine. So, black woman, no matter how far you think you're going, you <laughs> in this with us. Okay? Those of you that's going out marrying other nations, the Lord going to deal with you very harshly if you can't repent. Read. And sold the girl for wine. That they might drink. That they might party. They raped our women. Go ahead. Yay. And what have you... So you know what this is proving? This is proving that the white man in Israel that claims to be Jewish, these prophecies don't fit. And read that verse again, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. Lots wasn't cast for the white man in Israel. <laughs> and have given a boy for an home. The white man in Israel wasn't made into breeders. They weren't made into breeders. And sold the girl for wine. And the white girl in Israel, they wasn't sold for wine. So who is the Bible talking about? The black man and black woman of today. We are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Come out of those dumb churches. Those harlot houses. Come on. That they might drink. Yay? And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Uh oh. Read it again. Yay! And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? So now you have to do a little bit of study in there. Tyre and Zidon were children of Ham, descendants of Ham. Ham became the father of all the African races. African peoples. I'm going to say it again. Ham became the progenitor, the forefather of all Africans. But not you so-called black men and black women. You come from Jacob. You are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Read it again. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? What do you Africans have to do with me? Come on. And all the coast of Palestine. And you Palestinians, you Arabs, what do you have to do with me? So now what I want you to see, brothers and sisters, that this chapter here, Joel 3, deals with the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, 
who was sold during the transatlantic slave trade. Read it again. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? So it's pinpointing the Africans. That's Tyre and Zidon. And all the coast of Palestine. The Palestinians are the Arabs. So you got the Africans and the Arabs. What happened? Will you render me a recompense? Will you judge God? Will you pay God back? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? What did the Africans and the Arabs do to us during the transatlantic slave trade? What did they do to us in the 1600s? The slave trade. They sold us into slavery. They rounded us up. And I got news for all you brothers that call yourselves Muslim. Right. The largest slave port, I'm going to say this part slow, the largest slave port was Mecca. They treated us worse of all the nations in Mecca, where they cut our hands off and our feet. The Arabs taught they those Islamic Arabs and those Islamic Africans, oh, they gave us hell in slavery. Read it again. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Africans. And all the coast of Palestine? Palestinians, those are the Arabs. Will you render me a recompense? They wanted to pay God back. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Come on. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. And have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. They robbed the temple. All the wealth that we had in our land, they robbed us. The Africans and the Arabs robbed us. Go ahead. Verse 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Cretans. Read it again. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem. Stop. The so what's this? who's the subject? Judah and Jerusalem. That's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Tyre and Zidon with the Palestinians, which are the Africans and the Arabs, they sold us. Verse 6 is explaining the slave trade right here. Read it again. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. Who? Unto the Grecians. The Grecians are the Greeks. The white man is the Grecians here in Joel, the third chapter and the sixth verse. So Tyre with Zidon and the coast of Palestine sold the three tribes of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, to the Grecians, to the white man. This is explaining the slave trade of the 1600s. So now, back to verse, jump up where it says, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Verse 4, yea, and what have ye to do with me? O Tyre and Zidon. Africans. And all the coasts of Palestine. Arabs. Will you render me a recompense? Mm -hmm. okay. And if he recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? How did they recompense God? What did they do to the Israelites? Verse 6 now. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. They sold us. Tyre, Zidon, and the Palestinians sold us to the Grecians. Read it again. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. So brothers and sisters, you have not learned this Bible yet. But before the day of the Lord comes, before the destruction comes to Babylon the Great, the United States of America, you're going to learn this Bible. It's prophesied that one third of our people shall repent. Two thirds of you shall die here in Babylon. Okay, from there, let's go to Revelation 11. Okay, so we were sold to the Grecians. We were sold to the so-called white man. Okay, that's what happened to us. Moses told us that. Okay, now the prophet John saw a vision. Okay, about all this that was going to go down. Revelation 11, let's start at verse 8. Revelation 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So now. Once, you know what? Let me bridge it. Let me bridge it for you. I want you to hold that. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Okay. I, I just want to bridge it. Because the, 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 the Africans and the Arabs sold us to the white man. And what happened? How did we get over here? Here's it right here. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt there means slavery. means captivity. Read again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. Come on. 
By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses said we were going to slavery, that's the way it happened. Thou shalt see it no more again. You wouldn't see your homeland no more again. And there, and there once you got off those ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You would be sold unto your enemies. For bond men, for slave men, and bond women, and slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall save you, redeem you from captivity, from the curses of God. Malcolm X tried to redeem us, he failed and died. Martin Luther King, he failed and died. Okay, Marcus Garvey, he failed and died. Go ahead. Yes, it that was it. Now back to Revelation 11. So now once we got off those slave ships and were sold to our enemies, Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation 11, okay, Revelation, the book itself, is written like a big parable. In order to understand the book of Revelation, you must understand the rest of the Bible. The rest of the Old Testament and New Testament, you must understand. Revelation 11 and 8, please. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Now, let's pause right there. What does it mean, their dead bodies? What is that going into? Hold that. Get Proverbs 21 and I think it's 16. Wondrous. Yeah. And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city. Uh, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Meaning you're spiritually dead if you leave the laws of God. Back to Revelation 11 now. Rep this is talking about the Israelites. Um, let me help you to something. When you read above it and it talks about the two prophets, it's symbolic about the two kingdoms of Israel because Israel was divided into two kingdoms, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel, which was also known as the kingdom of Ephraim. Read it again, Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Of the great city. The great city is referring to Babylon the Great otherwise known to you as the United States of America. Which spiritually? Which spiritually, because you ain't physically dead, and this ain't spiritually ba uh, the real Babylon. Read it again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is Babylon. Which spiritually? Which spiritually is called Sodom? Is called Sodom. This place is spiritually called Sodom. This ain't the real Sodom, brothers and sisters. John says this place, Babylon the Great America, is spiritually called Sodom. Why is this place spiritually called Sodom? Because just like in ancient Sodom, you had Sodom and Gomorrah. What was going on there? Homosexuality, gay rights, gay marriages, men with men, women with men, women. Read it again. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. This place is not the real Egypt, but it's spiritually called Egypt. Because in ancient Egypt, what happened there? You had the 12 tribes in bondage under Pharaoh in ancient Egypt. So here, America is called spiritual Egypt because here the 12 tribes of Israel are in bondage in this spiritual Egypt. Oh, you don't think this is spiritually called Egypt? Pull out a dollar bill. A one dollar bill. What do you see on the back of the one dollar bill? Oh, you see a pyramid? You see the all-seeing eye of Horus on there? The all-seeing eye of Ra, whatever it's called. This place is spiritually called Egypt. The Washington Monument, what's there? What is it? An obelisk. Where'd that design come from? Ancient Egypt. You got many real obelisk here in the United States of America that they stole from Egypt. So read that verse again. And they're dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Our Lord wasn't crucified here. He was crucified uh, in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But this place, he was spiritually crucified here. How was he spiritually crucified here? We read it at the beginning of the lesson. We read the description of Christ. His head and his hands were white like wool. His eyes were like lamps of fire, and his feet like polished brass burned in a furnace. That image, brothers and sisters, was crucified. The image of the black Christ was crucified here, put to death, and they gave you a new Jesus Christ. They gave you the image of the beast, 
white man Jesus that all the world worships. Read the verse again, please. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So our Lord was spiritually crucified here, meaning his image. Read on. And they are the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Meaning 350 years. They, they watched our dead state, our dead spirits, 350 years. How long have we been here, brothers and sisters? This truth started coming out a little while ago. Read it again. And they, and they are the people, and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see. Stop right there. You know what's heavy about that? Read it again. And they are the people, and kindreds and tongues and nations. Stop. What is America called? The Great Melting Pot. Right. Why is it called that? Because you have all people here. You have all nations here. You have all tongues, languages here. Read it again. So they, this is a clue to let you know who this is talking about. And they are the people, and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. 350 years. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Because we're not physically dead. Hold on, go back to Proverbs 21 in case you forgot the thought. Okay? Why didn't they suffer our dead bodies to be put in uh, graves? Because we were not, we are not physically dead. Proverbs 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So the black man and black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, we are the spiritually dead the Bible is talking about. Because we left our one true God. We left our nationality. We forgot the laws of the Most High. Now back to Revelation 11. What verse you read? That's verse, I'm in verse 9. Just, I finished verse 9. Read 9 again. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Because we're not physically dead, we're spiritually dead. Go ahead. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice. They over rejoiced them. over us when they conquered us and made us slaves. Read it again. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. All the nations here in America rejoice when the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, was subdued in slavery, was conquered in slavery, and make merry. And they made merry and shall send gifts one to another. And they gave gifts one to another. Wait, 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 wait. Let's pause there a second. It said that the nations rejoiced over our dead bodies, okay? And they gave gifts one to another. What, ho what holiday does this sound like? Hold on. Give me Jeremiah 10. Let's get Jeremiah 10. And verse, we're going to read 1 through 4. Right. So they rejoiced over us, our dead bodies, and they gave gifts to each other. What does this sound like? Hmm. Jeremiah 10, let's read 1 through 4. Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Listen good, you Israelites, black men, black women, Latin men, Latin women. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith who? The Lord. Hmm. Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen. Everything the black man, Latin man has learned has been from the heathen, meaning the white man. From your nationality, where'd you learn that from? The white man. Your religion, where'd you learn the religions you got? The white man. In slavery you learned all that. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't be dismayed at the sun, moon, and stars. For the heathen are dismayed. The nations are dismayed at them. Come on. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are lies. That's the word vain means lies. The customs of the white man are lies. Come on. For one cut of a tree out of the forest. One cuts a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Uh oh, they cut a tree down with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate this tree with silver and with gold. Uh oh. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. They, they fasten a tree with nails and hammers and put in a stand sometimes. That it move not. That a tree don't fall down or, or walk away or whatever. They are upright as the palm tree. So what holiday is this that God tells us not to learn, brothers and sisters? He said, learn not the way of the heathen. See, you've been learning the ways of the heathen all these hundreds and hundreds of years here in Babylon the Great, here in the United States of America. They taught you Christmas and slavery. They taught us Christmas and slavery. God says, learn not the ways of the heathen. Read that verse again about the uh, tree. 
For one cut of a tree. For uh, for the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are lies. For one cut of a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So we learn that, that evil heathen custom from, the sli from our slave master, the white man. Back to Revelation 11. And I want the verse you left off about they gave gifts one to another. What verse was that? Verse 10. Verse 10. Revelation 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. You know why? I'm glad they used the word merry. <laughs> Where did you use that word merry? Merry Christmas. Madness. Read it again. And, the, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall so send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets... Because these two prophets, Judah and Israel, the two kingdoms, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. We tormented the nations. We forced the laws of God on the nations. We didn't play with them. But then we sinned, okay? And we had to go into slavery. So when we fell under the nations, they rejoiced because they knew the hell we put on them. Was that it? That was it on the first Okay, okay from there. Um, let's go to Luke 2, because we read about so-called Christmas, right? And you go, oh, Christmas is the birth of Jesus. <laughs> Christmas is, I, anybody show me the scripture that says Jesus Christ was born on December 25th? Can anybody? Let's see in the birth of Christ, Luke 2, is it 42? Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 2, verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Oh, oh, read it again. And when he was 12 years old. Let's read the verse before it. Verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. So every year at the Feast of the Passover, they went up to Jerusalem, right? And when he was 12 years old, oh, and when Christ became 12, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. When did he become 12? On the Passover. It's giving you his birthday there. That's the day wherein he was born, not December 25th. Passover is when the beginning of spring, brothers and sisters. Okay, so that ex that we we have no more excuse for ignorance. You are gonna learn this Bible. You keep tuning in, record these shows. You are gonna learn this Bible. Okay, from there, Isaiah twenty nine verse thirteen. Okay, Isaiah twenty nine verse thirteen. Isaiah chapter twenty nine, verse thirteen. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near, near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me. You black men, Latin men, you've been drawing near the Lord for too long with your mouth. Talking about, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. Come on. But have removed their heart far from me. When it says your heart means your mind. When it says you remove your mind far from the Lord, you remove your mind far from the laws of the Bible. Come on. And their fear toward me is taught. By the precept of men. Your fear towards God is taught by who? By the precept of men. What man taught you Christmas? What man taught you Christ was born December 25th? What man taught you that Christ was blonde haired and blue eyed? What man is this talking about? Because you, oh, I, I can't figure it out. You lying black men and black women. Read it again. Verse, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. The white man. I'm going to make it plain and simple to you. The, your white slave masters taught you Christ was born December 25th. Your white slave master taught you that Christ was blonde haired and blue eyed. Your white slave master told you that the truth don't matter. That's what he taught you, and many of you mimic that in your churches. Okay? Many of you mimic that. Keep going on. We don't. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work 
among this people. So behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. And God is going to do a wonder among his people. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. The wisdom of your wise men shall perish. Who is your wise men? When you think of a wise man, do you think of brothers that look like us? No, you don't. You think of John F. Kennedy. <laughs> you think of the white man. Uh, you think of Abraham Lincoln. You think of Bill Clinton. That's what you think of. You think of the white man. Read it again. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. When you think of wise men in terms of the Bible, who do you think of? Joel Osteen. You think of Rex Humbard, Jimmy Swaggart. You think John of Hagee. Paula White, John Hagee. That's who you think of. Come on. And so it says what? And the wisdom of their what? And then the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. That's happening now. Because this Bible is eating up every lie they have taught you. The lie that Christ was blind, haired, and blue eyed, we read the scripture. The Bible says, proves that that's a lie. Oh, that we supposed to celebrate Christmas? The Bible condemns that as a lie. Oh, uh, what else? Um, um, that the people in Israel is the Jew. Oh, that's been condemned as a lie through the Bible. Read that part again, the wisdom of their wise men. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. You're going through that now. This is the greatest time on earth, brothers and sisters. Stay tuned. Stay on. Record these channels. Take your notes, your pens and paper. Take notes. Record these shows. Because you ain't going to hear what we're teaching you in Sunday school. You're going to get lie after lie. Come on. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. The wisdom of your prudent men, your white slave masters, shall be hid. Because you're, gonna, you're finding out now. Moses was not a white man, okay? You're finding out Christ is not white. God don't have straight hair, blonde straight hair. Oh, he don't got blue eyes. Oh, we've been lied to all our lives. We don't got to, we're not supposed to celebrate Christmas. What are you talking about? Huh? All that's going through your mind right now. You have a decision to make. I pray you repent and choose the way and words of the Most High God. Come on. Verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. The white man sought deep to hide his counsel from the Lord. Come on. And their works are in the dark. When was their works in the dark? When the Israelites, the people of God, was in slavery. When they forced us not to read or write. When they, they made us into a base people, uneducated, illiterate. And they set up all these false holidays. They, taught, they made up all these false religions. That's how it was in the dark. Because there was no prophet, no men or women of God to stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord, that is wrong. There was no one to do that. That's how their works was in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? Who seeth us? Because all the nations were in agreement with this. That's what Revelation proved. That's what Psalms 83 proved. We went over that in the episode ago. Was that it? And who knoweth us? And who knoweth us? Who knows that the white man is the wicked that did all these things? That put out all these lies? Okay? Come on, was that it? Verse 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. The white man turned the words of God upside down. They made lie into truth. Okay? Our truth today is lies, according to the Bible. God's going to turn it to right side up. That's what you're learning now. So brothers, sisters, Christ said, and you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. If you want to be set free, repent of your sins as the Israelites, okay? Bring your donations, send your donations, okay? It's only through you we're able to keep this televised, okay? This truth will carry, must carry on, brothers and sisters. And with that, we give all praises to the Most High and His Son, Christ, and we say, Shalom. Shalom.